Hey guys, today we're looking at the Matchbox Churchill AVRE or Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers uh, in 176 scale. As you can see here, you have the box with the artwork which has the tank itself um, displayed, uh, deploying the, uh, the bridge, the SBG. Uh, standard box girder bridge I think it was called in the background there there's a bit of artillery going off and wrecked house and all the rest of it not sure who did the artwork on this I uh, can't see a name on it could, could be Doug Post could be uh, Huxley one of those guys uh, but uh, typical uh, matchbox kind of uh, artwork there quite nice um, the rest of the box then and this three colour kit um, shows the, uh, the diorama there that's sort of a raised piece of ground figures not included as it says um, not much else going on there, a little bit of uh, artwork there showing you how it looks like when it's painted up perhaps. Um, that's quite nice. Uh, the usual warnings here says it's level 3, um, which is debatable, it's a little bit tricky in places which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the back of it then of course just shows the diorama, kind of a painting guide. Now you'll notice on this um, particular kit there's a little bit of uh, Chinese script here because this particular kit was originally re released by Matchbox in 1983 um, and then subsequently in 92 and uh, 2006 then by uh, Revel. Um, this particular one seems to be one of the Chinese ones as people uh, kind of refer, refer to them as. Uh, I believe in 82 uh, because of the uh, failure of the Matchbox company, um, the Les products part or, uh, was bought out by a guy called David Ye or David Ye from uh, Hong Kong or China and they were manufacturing them so that's why you have um, did a, like a 10 year lease or something uh, you have a little bit of Chinese script on that um, and more about that in a moment so the contents of the box anyway we'll put this out of the way for a moment um, what you have is your instructions again you can see this is one of the Chinese releases uh, because well it tells you what the uh, tank but I can't tell you much from that unfortunately my Chinese would be um, non-existent really. Um, now inside here you have your various uh, instructions starts off with the bridge which is a very very uh, simple straightforward piece although I would advise that if you are put doing this particular section in particular um, that you lay out the pieces literally in order as it is there don't have them kind of taken off the sprue and lying around uh, because they're sort of chamfered or beveled whatever it is on the tops there and they have to go in in the exact order these pieces are in one sense identical but um it, it does it does matter so just make sure you lay them out correctly there if you're doing that particular uh, this particular kit uh, the rest of it then goes together fairly easily um a little bit of fit and finish issues i found on the one i did um which i'll show you momentarily um but you have a bit of sandpaper or a bit of a sharp knife and you'll be fine um you have the boom here for the cable which we'll show you in a second and the usual kind of matchbox vinyl track links there and the method of linking um petard mortar and hull piece uh, it's a the, the cast hull version so it's the um churchill mark four i think um and then you have all these uh, the track assembly here. Nice thing about it is that these spring suspension uh, pieces are kind of all one piece, as opposed to the Airfix one, if I remember correctly, it was a little bit difficult, uh, tricky rather than uh, time consuming rather than difficult. Um, and then of course you have the rest of the assembly here, and uh, it just goes down along and you assemble the kit accordingly. Now we will note this particular section here, uh, it says to use a 20 gram weight in the rear of the vehicle. This is a counterweight uh, to uh, Because the bridge which is it when attached to the front obviously has its own inherent weight and it will tip the model over if you do not have the counterweight in place So the last few bits and pieces go together there and it just clips into these little kind of uh, points here, which uh, you're supposed to glue it into or not depending on what you want to do with it um, I didn't glue it in, I'll show you that in a moment. And then you have this um, kind of assembly for the boom and the bridge uh, with uh, rollers and runners and bits and pieces here. Now, I didn't do this, and again, I'll explain that shortly. Um, this looks a little bit tricky, but uh, I'm sure if you just take your time, you'll get there. There's plenty of uh, references online for that as well. Uh, on the back there, you have your um, usual painting guide scenario. You have three... Uh, Three variants, I think it is, yeah, for the uh, the decals, and um, they're, uh, it's fairly straightforward. All of the decals in this were a bit of a disaster, um, and I'll show you those again in a moment. So that's that. Let's have a look at the, uh, the sprue, shall we? So we'll start off with the bridge section, which is this here. 
Uh, again, these are just the parts here, and I said just be careful putting this together. It went together very, very easily. In fairness, it's it's uh, it's actually a nice little uh, little bridge piece, nice little bit of detail for something that could have been so simple. Um, I mean, uh, the ridges for the planks and bits and pieces, and you've got this kind of a uh, metal um, bracing, whatever it is. Um, that's so quite nice and nothing particularly outstanding i mean it's just a, a nice little piece simple it goes together nice and handy um that's that now the uh other part here we have um kind of the main body of the tank itself you can see there's a little bit of flash here um it's particularly around this kind of uh section here in the, in the, the center uh to do with some stowage but it's nothing a, a good sharp scalp i won't take care of all the pieces are quite clear um, no major issue there. The one thing I will say is that of all the Matchbox kits I've done, and if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know I am a bit of a Matchbox fanboy or aficionado. Um, this is the lightest plastic. I don't know, is it something to do with the uh, change of manufacturer location or what? But uh, definitely the plastic in this uh, kit is uh, not as uh, sturdy as in previous Matchbox kits, I've noticed. Now, whether that was the case with the original Matchbox releases, if they don't this or not, uh, and the subsequent Revel ones, or Revel ones um, I can't tell you I only have um, Matchbox, uh, this particular example, to go on. Um, but anyway, that's the, uh, the situation with that. So we'll put that out of the way there, and we'll get you the final sprue. So the final sprue there then has some more pieces of the bridge. There's a boom in the top right-hand corner, uh, the exhaust section for the tank itself, and the mortar and two halves, uh, which had to be loaded outside the vehicle. So I presume you rolled up to this uh, pillbox, whatever it was, you blasted it, and uh, you got out of there while the rest of the uh, armored unit did their work, and you reloaded it out of the line of fire, presumably. Uh, but not a very enviable situation to be in either way. Um, again, this is the track assembly section here, uh, which is uh, again quite straightforward. And these little pieces that attach to the front um, in conjunction with uh, this little short piece here um, for the uh, connection of the bridge. And you've the little diorama section there as well, which is nice, quite, like, quite a nice little piece uh, actually to balance with you. Again, quite lightweight in comparison to uh, to other Matchbox diorama pieces, I find. Uh, but it'll paint up nicely, and uh, because I have two of these, I'm actually going to incorporate them into some uh, scenery for Wargaming. Um, you know, fallen bridge section, that type of thing. Uh, the track sections then themselves, which are these, are vinyl tracks. Um, no problem with those at all. Uh, very straightforward, as I always say. Um, a little bit of paint once they're on and off you go uh, i didn't bother uh, connecting them in the, uh, the the usual matchbox way because um a portion of them was concealed under track guards so as a result you uh you don't really need it and to be honest with you it actually fits better if you uh take out um about an inch or so off each uh and i just literally trimmed this section here down about four track lengths um back for our track links back uh from the uh the the, the that section there uh the little tab um, and again trimmed off the end piece here as well uh, just to uh, get it to fit in um, they're quite supple I mean for something so old I had no issues with the tracks I did have issues with the kit and uh, bits and pieces but uh, the tracks certainly weren't it um, in addition to that in the box you got uh, a little tube of glue which I won't even open because that's so old it's probably hazardous get rid of that a uh, little piece of information here. I don't know, it must be packing date or something. It says 1996 on it, I think. I'm uh, not sure what the rest of it is. And there's the decals or decals. Um, the decals here uh, look quite nice. And uh, they're very, very nice um, looking decals. You have the uh, 79th Armoured um, 42nd Assault Regiment um, logo there. You have uh, the 5th and 6th Assault Regiment and various markings there. You have, um, you can see there, the names for the tanks. Uh, Cruise with our Sabre, Bulldog and Sepoy or Sepoy, whatever that is. And you have the uh, the star there and uh, some other markings there which you can just about see. Um, it's easier to see them on camera, I think, than it is in uh, in real life <laughs> but uh, you can see it says printed in germany by revel even though the box itself seems to be a chinese manufacturer but anyway i'm not sure of the uh, the history of that particular company uh these decals um on the ones i put together were a disaster an absolute disaster uh which i think is sort of indicative of those chinese kids anyway um every decal that's on the tank that i did is in about five parts and i'm not joking it, it, they're tiny i it was nerve-wracking uh, heartbreaking <laughs> but i used some home rule uh, decal fix um and eventually managed to get something out of it um i could have just got an aftermarket uh, set of decals but i really wanted to keep it as original to the uh the original as possible um so i 
basically gave myself a nervous breakdown trying to do these decals but I got it done and I'll show you that now in a second so we get the tracks and the decals out of the way so here is my um, more or less finished um, model I'd say more or less I might do a little bit more weathering um, a bit more rust on it I just kind of did a silver kind of a dry brush over that so I'll probably just tidy it up a little bit there uh, you can probably see the decals there uh, each of those decals is in several pieces <laughs> including the little um, squadron marking on the turret there as well um, the two figures do not come with the uh, tank itself these are just ones I trimmed um, took the legs off them and the they are um, Montgomery from the British 8th Army section, uh, set on the right hand side and kind of a waving infantryman who legend has it is is supposed to be a tank uh, tank guy anyway um on the left hand side there just trim the legs off them and drop them in and there was just two turrets in a churchill and i just said look i've never put crew members in a churchill before so uh, i'll go all the way and pop the two guys at the top of it um just a rub of number 26 uh humbro matte enamel uh some black which i think is 33 flesh and a rub of null and oil by citadel over them just to give it a bit of shading um and that's that and there's the uh, the bridge and boom section there you can see i just gave it a, a the tank and uh, the green the green section on, on all this is a uh, humbro mat 86 uh, 113 is the uh, the brown wooden slats or lats whatever you want to call them uh beam boards whatever you want to call it there for the uh the, the actual bridge itself and uh, 66 is the gray i've used in all this uh, humble mat 66 um i did give it a brush a dry brushing of a um, kind of a metallic uh, silver type of a metallic gray um over all that there as well just to give it a, a kind of a worn uh, effect and that's the, the tank there basically now you will notice the uh, cabling here is not as displayed in the instructions and i have a little a little uh, improvised hook section there which i'm going to uh, do a little bit more with um subsequently and um, the reason for this is i use these for wargaming rapid fire is my thing and as such i need the bridge to be able to be deployed rather than just be a model so as a result it's not glued there down in the, the section just in front of the, the tracks uh, it's actually detachable and um we also the uh, hook obviously can release that so i can put the bridge down on the wargames table and drive my tank over if i so wish so to do this what i did was i used uh the boom i just put it back here as opposed to back here on the uh this section here if you can just uh where are we where am i tall here we are um so i applied it here as opposed to here where it should have been uh, as the instructions and the inspiration I took from that was uh, Colin Rumford or Richard Marsh's um, oh, uh, supplement for D-Day for rapid fire. On the inside cover there's a picture of a, uh, a Churchill AVRE and the, it's set up something similar to that. Uh, the cable is actually a bit of what we call wire trace uh, for pike fishing of all things. Um, it's a piece of trace. I've, I've actually caught fish on that very piece of trace that's on that. But uh, I took off the swivels uh, off the end of it there. I just crimped them down with the pliers and just threw them over the uh, the handles of that winch section. Uh, ran it through the hole there, just opened up a small bit with a blade uh, and then applied the hook. Um, I am going to replace that uh, silver piece there at the very, very top, which is just a kind of a temporary arrangement uh, with a, a very small, uh, again, fishing swivel and hook set. Um, I just couldn't lay my hand on it uh, the other evening when I was doing this, but I, I know I have them somewhere up in the attic in the fishing gear box um, and they'll go in there. It just kind of looks a bit more cably for want of a better term and it's a far simpler arrangement and it means it's detachable and usable in uh, the war game scenario and that's basically that if we can have a look at the decals there there isn't much going on with the decals anyway um you can probably see at the back here if we can just get a bit of a focus on that at all is it going to cooperate probably not so there's only two there uh, and you have um kind of uh, unit number or whatever it is on the side here and it's on the other side as well and there's uh, other markings in the front section there below the um the uh, the machine gun but that's basically it it was a relatively simple kit to put together uh, one or two little fit issues here and there um the bridge section is fractionally crooked 
Um, and I thought it was me, but I did a little bit of research online and I found that a lot of examples um, actually turned out that way. There's another YouTuber, uh, McConaughey, I think his name is, uh, Aussie Lad, and his one turned out the same as well. The tracks, the, the full tracks assembly system is a little bit difficult to keep uh, straight, but uh, a little bit of perseverance you'll get there. I have seen other uh, versions of these over the years, um, other modelers. Um, and clubs and that and a uh, similar situation has occurred but uh, I think it turned out fairly okay and as I said it's for wargaming so it doesn't have to be um, perfect in my book um, it's a kit I've been after for a long long time I remember being in the store with my father I'd say a good 35 years ago thereabouts um, I'd say the kit was only just released and I was going to get it and I didn't and I got something else and I didn't get it until adulthood um, but I'm delighted I've eventually got around to putting it together um, myself and my young lad had a go out there the other night and um, it, uh, quite happy with it in fairness um, probably do a little bit more finishing on it um, just to uh, make it look a little bit better as regards uh, weathering and that a little bit of chipping has to be done um, and so on but that's that so I'm quite happy with that particular kit so that's it guys that is the Churchill um, AVRE by Matchbox um, it's available by uh, manufacture by Revel at the moment I'm not sure if it's still in manufacture but it is still available uh, from various vendors um, a little bit less so these days but you'll turn up on eBay every now and again and uh, I'm sure you'll pick one up but if you're thinking of doing a, a kind of an engineering product uh, a project um, for maybe a 79th armor division uh, World War II you couldn't go wrong with this particular piece in fairness and uh, as I said it's a little bit challenging in one sense uh, just be careful take your time um, and follow the instructions very carefully don't be flippant with the instructions uh, you do have to pay close attention to them um, as I say, a sharp knife, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of patience, and you'll get there. So that's that, guys. Uh, if you'd like and subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated. Myself and the young lad would, uh, would love that. And uh, we'll be back with another video fairly soon. All right, guys, take it easy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.